and good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world. Uh, welcome to the Forbidden Lands, featuring Sterling as the DM, myself, uh, Dilf, Ultima, and Hosfe. We will be playing this RPG for you today, and hopefully you will enjoy as I bring them all over and hopefully they're not talking about anything terrible or publicly revealing. Everyone, hello. Oh, hi. Hello. Hello. Hopefully everything's okay. coming through okay. I am using a new microphone, so, you know, technical difficulties is our motto. <laughs> As is traditional. Indeed. Hmm. Oh, Mr. Sterling, take it away. It's your show. Thank you, Mr. Zinthar, and welcome everyone once again to the Forbidden Lands. It has been a little bit of a while since we've uh, streamed our last our last session. We had a bit of a meet up here down under, and Zinthar provided his very very fine meats. But oh, we the finest, <laughs> the finest meats were had. It's glorious. But so yes, much brisket. <laughs> it was a good meet and meet up Zinthor may or may not have been fattening us all up for some nefarious ends but yes we return to the strange dark and potentially quite lethal lands uh, of the former Ravenlands now known as the Forbidden Lands where four Brave? Is that the right word to use? <laughs> Lucky uh, ne'er-do-wells, four adventurers have set forth into this strange, uncharted region, which for nearly two centuries has been benighted with a magical uh, and deadly fog known as the Blood Mist that has stopped all travel uh, for uh, for those two centuries. And now... All of a sudden, as mysteriously, mysteriously as it arrived, it dissipates, allowing uh, travellers, merchants, bandits, adventurers such as these to go forth and seek their fortune, seek adventure, seek whatever strange things lie out there in the dark. So our four adventurers, without uh, further ado, are three goblins and... A strange werewolf-like creature. We have Darius, the merchant of the group. We have Grok, the mysterious goblin druid. We have Hosfe, the ranger with her animal companions. And we finally have Posik, the brave warrior, who, I believe in our last session, stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with an ogre and survived. It's all about the boots, baby. <laughs> Indeed. Hmm. Now, can any of the party, out of morbid curiosity, remember what happened last session? Does anyone dare to try to uh, provide a recap to our fair audience as to your misadventures? I do you remember that I was in charge of taking care of a small child, and that did not end well. The small child it died. It did not end well for you, no. Um, so we left the morning people and... I, After trying to steal from them. Yeah, well, I didn't try to steal from them. Points finger, accusingly. Um, There's no such thing as stealing. Property is theft. Then... Oh, somebody got cured or something. Oh yeah, Zinthan and... nearly died. Uh, poor Darius nearly died of a unpleasant disease he found in the woods we told him not to mess around with those bodies he found but no <laughs> well i tell a lie leave them alone nonsense well, they might have had something shiny in their pockets mm. not that i, I think he actually told us that you found the bodies at any point because that was you all by your lonesome yeah sick of something that we didn't actually know anything about we left on a cliffhanger i'm pretty sure but i can't remember what it was about <laughs> There was an elf and a human, I believe, dueling in the woods. Or uh, no, it was an elf and an orc. orc. orc an orc, orc in fact. Right. Yes. Yes. We were I believe a spirited we've... sparring session. 
Yes, indeed, until you rudely interrupted. I did not rudely interrupt. In fact, I... <laughs> we it's like, uh, excuse me. Please don't kill us. Okay. <laughs> and it turned out they were friends all along, and if we'd charged in, then bad things would have happened. And I think we ended up um, going back to their camp and hanging out with them for a while. Indeed. And then wandering on a bit further. Although I think that was actually before the whole ogre shamozzle. Oh, that was after, I think. Yes, we dealt with the that ogre was after. first. The ogre was the first thing, yeah. Mm. And I believe we were camped in the woods going, Oh bugger, we are running very low on food. And it would be nice to have a place to stay. And that was the end of that. Indeed. Hey, I found us so many potatoes. Indeed. So you wake up. It is the 12th day of spring rise, the 12th day of spring. And it's still relatively cold today. At a brisk minus 8.3 degrees Celsius. Yeah. And there's a light, light covering of snow in the uh, the woods surrounding you. A few of you are perhaps shivering a little bit as uh, dawn arises on this new day. You are running a little bit low on food and resources. Um, you are still a few leagues south of the hollows where you first began your your grand adventure. What is your next move? And for the audience, just to uh, explain, this system is essentially randomly generated. Uh, it is a sandbox. There is no uh, railroad that I'm having to force the party down. Um, the encounters, the things that they discover are entirely random. I don't get to see them myself until I roll them, and then hilarity ensues. So. Very player-driven. Speaking of, what is the party's next move? Well, we are closer to the hollows than I thought we were, but I believe that Hoss is completely out of food. And I know I'm running real low, so do we want to make a sprint for back to town so we can sell that coffin and the mirror and all the other wonderful things we got? Oh, or do yeah. we want to camp out and hunt and get some supplies and not starve to death on the way back? I'd love to not starve, and I also don't understand the idea of carrying around this massive bronze coffin. Money. It's shiny. Yeah, it Coffin is shiny. collect shiny. I believe we should go sell it. <laughs> yes, for more shiny. Little shiny. From little shiny. Little shiny. Yeah, there we go. And then we turn little shiny into actual useful things like, I don't know, a shield, more food. <laughs> Uh, Twenty dollars. I wanted a peanut. <laughs> Twenty dollars can buy more peanuts. <laughs> Crazy talk. Does so, the hollows have a blacksmith? Uh, because the what does? It? Yes. Yeah. I was just imagining us dragging it all the way to town, and then them just not knowing what to do with it because <laughs> they don't have any of the resources to actually process it. They should still make it a fine bathtub. I assure you. Or getting pissed that we've brought it from wherever it's came. It's a town based around a graveyard. They will have use for it. <laughs> our lost king. It's the coffin of our lost king. <laughs> well, it was empty when we found it. Yes, if you crown yourself king with the coffin's remains, you shall be the next king. Yes, we shall bury you in the king's grave. <laughs> Okay, so that's votes for going back to the hollows. I was about to say home, but it's not really home, is it? <laughs> yeah, so what's our supply stuff like? I'm on uh, D6 for food and water, which I think is the smallest dice. We, if we're not searching, we can just go straight through to the hollows. It shouldn't take us that long. No, I'm if okay. I... yeah. we, we can just head north. We need your to cross the main river. challenge, yeah, your main challenge will be to cross the river to find a ford. A fjord. Not a fjord. A fjord. Mining the fjords. 
Uh, well, it's two hexes straight north, and one's a river, so find a ford, I guess? Oh, I had marked it. We... Did we go across there? No, I thought we went down here. Further south. You crossed. It was here. Yeah, we're on the return side of a loop, doing the opposite side of the river. We can follow the river up on the other side of it, because I vaguely remember there being bridges over the river mm-hmm. down in multiple places. Let's try our luck further upstream, or should we take the safe route and go back? No. Okay, I vote we go up, upstream. Yeah, I think if we hug the east bank of the river, and we will get to the town eventually. I agree with North. North seems like a good movement. Be careful of the words you use. I'm somehow imagining one of us actually attempting to hug the river. <laughs> river friend. Yes, well, I'm sure I can't imagine who would be the one doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so I assume that you will be having the traditional marching order with Grok leading the way and Hosfe keeping watch. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. All right. Sounds good to me. In which case, let us depart. Um, I will have Hosfe do me a scouting check, please. Scouting. Scouting. And Grok can give me a survival check, please. I can't select my character sheet thing. Sorry. Well, that's it. You're out of the party. Okay. Oop. Yeah. Literally, everything on the left side of the screen can't engage with for some reason. The right the side's fine. Technical issues. Oh, yeah. So many technical issues. But I can roll an actual dice. This was your plan all along. Yes, geometry. I will be doing sunless skies next. So D six. Uh, it will be your. It's it's survival, so eight dice, eight D six, and probably reduced by two to find a Ford. So, six dice, please. I'm glad you're looking forward to it, Geometry. I'm sure we'll have great fun in the sky. Math rocks. Hmm. Uh, two ones. Uh, two, two threes, and a four. Ooh. That's not very good. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> oh, dear. You have a bit of a mishap, sir. <laughs> he tried to hug the river, didn't he? Possibly. Friend, new friend. Possibly. Let us see what happens to you as Grok leads the party on a merry way <laughs> uh, downstream. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, you're meant to be going downstream. The river flows north. Oh, okay. Yes, we've been following this river. The river is a giant snake. The snake is hungry. <laughs> that is entirely too plausible. <laughs> so, does that mean we're heading northeast instead of north? I mean, we're going somewhere. You're going somewhere. Ooh. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, this will be interesting. He leads you in the right direction, and he, well, perhaps assures you that he knows where he's going. And he, you hike on down along the riverbank through muddy 
sludgy uh, embankments and through uh, lots of bulrushes and uh, standing bodies of water, whereupon all of you are beset by that most delightful of insects, blood-sucking mosquitoes. Oh, joy. Friends. And... Let's see if they inflict any damage. Can I possibly uh, request a magical item that res- may or may not resemble a tennis racket that's actually a bug zapper? <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely ambition, but I suspect that we're not going to have one right this instant. No, probably not. <laughs> you can hide in the coffin. All right. Uh, Posic, you suffer two damage to your empathy as you are beset by itchy bitey uh, mosquitoes. Bug Darius, is angry. Darius, you take one point of damage to empathy. Dang. Grok, the fearless leader, takes one point of damage to empathy. And Hosfe does her fur protect her. No, it does not. She takes two damage to her empathy as the mosquitoes have their way. The good news is that you are able to actually find a ford (laughs) and 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 make a crossing (laughs) into uh, the hex beyond, into the plains on the other side of the river. And even better news is that nothing untoward happens to you. It is a fairly peaceful journey. Uh, despite uh, the swarms of biting insects. Yes, we're just all very annoyed that we've been bitten to death by mosquitoes. Indeed. And in fact, by about midday, you arrive back at the hollows. You see it in sight, the familiar low stone wall surrounding this uh, large hillock that sort of stands uh, astride the plains around it. I will pay my last penny for um, itchy bite cream. <laughs> well, the uh, the alchemist slash midwife known as Nervir, uh, whom you met very briefly, may have something to soothe your uh, your bites. Bizarre. But yes, welcome all back to the Hollows this lovely village which is hustling and bustling um, as you arrive and various villagers look on at you as you uh, pr- as you enter through the through the gates you note that there are one or two sentinels standing duty uh, on the watchtower surrounding the town and they have taken notice of you but uh, you are not newcomers to this place you have been here before, and the villagers are only slightly less uh, hostile to outsiders than they are with you. <laughs> so, only slightly. only slightly. Here we have the map. Hopefully, you can all see it. Yes. Yes. Where do you wish to go first? Uh, do we want to? It's hustling and bustling. Is it like normal kind of hustling and bustling? We've been here before, or is it like overly? It's a busy day in town. Um, You'll see various farmers coming and going with their wares. There are people uh, going to the sort of the the marketplace in the middle of the town around the well, buying and selling. Um, It is a, a fairly normal day in this part of the world. Okay. Should we... Was it the Three Skulls Tavern or the Dead Man's Hand that was the um, uh, dwarf? Three Skulls was the out-of-town bar. Yeah, let's go to the out-of-town bar again, I think. Um, Should we secure rooms first or go selling first? Try to sell this junk first. I mean, rare and interesting treasures... (laughs) Oh, well, that sounds very much like a you thing. It sure does. 
Let's go do it. So, I mean, we could split it up and I can be the uh, Sherpa for the piles of highly valuable crap while our uh, druid and uh, wolf go off and find mosquito cream. Very, or we could all just stick together and to sell the midwife's share. cottage. If you want, I can put your tokens on the map and you can move them to where you wish to go. Um, I mean, we're in a town, but I don't think we should split the party. <clears throat> Fair call. You never know, the undead might come out, come in. True. Uh, they only come out after night. Allegedly. It might still happen. <laughs> Where do you think you would like to sell your goods? Well, I suppose we should go and see the obvious purveyor of metal items, the smith. It's likely a pretty good a pretty good location. Is anyone going to be going with Darius? Yeah, I think, well, I'm going with the majority of the party, so... Yeah, stick with them. Somebody's going to carry everything, and I don't think Darius is carrying his own stuff. This is why I have friends, right? <laughs> it's like moving house. I'll just go stare down the well. Is there good fungus down there? It might be. Or at least an interesting mold. <laughs> Perhaps a few mold slimes, you never know. Oh dear. <laughs> you approach the smithy, and the clanging sounds of the smith's art incessantly reverberate from a building at the north end of the square. Large sections of the building are open towards uh, the outside world, and through the smoke you can make out a forge and a massive anvil. Newly wrought tools hang from the roof as you see the local blacksmith, Ness, this burly uh, bronzed gentleman, hammering away at his latest wares. Greetings, good sir. Mm. Goblin, you're back. We were thinking that perhaps you had been taken by the mist or something worse out there. Um, the dangers are ever present, but so is the prophets, if you know where to look. Mm, he keeps hammering away, seemingly nope, not whatever. terribly interested in. <laughs> Thank you, Atamu. Water break, everyone. Glug, glug, glug. I have wine for that, too. Yeah, it's a liquid. Water. Water. Just don't <laughs> kill yourself. Do not chug the entire goon bag. I actually need to get a drink. I'll be right back. Excuse me, I'm a classy gentleman. I have it attached to my washing line. <laughs> well, no, we did have a um, streamer who was drinking alcohol every time somebody did water break and I think he passed out that may or may, that may, not, or may yes. not have been there. that does uh, scan because uh, the crowd is very fond of making us drink yes. alright I'm back yeah, sorry for the interruption No, not at all. It's a good idea. I can just want to thank. So yes, he, he's not terribly. He doesn't seem terribly interested. Uh, um, after exchanging his greeting, he goes back to hammering his uh, whatever it is he's he's working on. Well, sir, I have come today to offer you first chance to purchase some rare commodities. Can I interest you in perhaps this glorious bronze sarcophagus? With only the finest scrollwork detailing and history attached to it. He stops his hammering and turns to look at this fairly large object you've got dragged, uh, dragged behind you. 
I can only assume. Well, it's not floating. Oh, I would hope not. That would be a bit. It was on one of our pack animals, wasn't it? I believe it was on the donkey or the horse. Mm -hmm. mm. And it had the mirror in it, I believe. Yes. We sort of stacked them on top of each other. And I think the only other thing we've got to sell is the tankard I found by shoving my arm into a dark hole. <laughs> He he stops what he's doing and he approaches the this large object that he had brought him and you can see his uh, brow furrows as he strokes his moustache and oh it's good quality bronze you've got there where do you find it don't tell me you've been looting the crypts. No, no, nothing nefarious. We merely reclaimed it from ne'er-do-wells and unfortunate trolls. I can assure you, good sir, it was already empty by the time that we'd arrived. Mm. Oh, I don't believe I don't it was guess... a crypt. It was a hole at best. I could... <laughs> I could use this bronze. How much are you wanting for it? Well, some excellent bronze in such excellent condition. With such pre-done work, I cannot let go for any less than five silver, sir. Five silver. Hmm. Can you make me a manipulation skill check for me, please? Certainly can. How much was this valued at? Was it valued? Don't see bonuses. Uh, not at this point, though. Alright, straight up roll. No! Hmm, he ponders. Five silver, you say. Indeed, sir. It is very good work. I can see that. Looks like elven scroll work to me. Sincerely hope it's not going to curse me by passing it on to me. Uh, all I right. I that I have had my magical comrade here uh, inspect it thoroughly for curses and have found none. <laughs> oh, it's very cursed. Shut up. <laughs> all right, goblin, you've got yourself a deal. You can have your five silver for it. I spit in the palm of my hand and offer it to him. <laughs> he uh, uh, hesitates for a moment, but then strongly shakes your hand, nearly knocking you off your <laughs> off your feet. Very done good. and done. I, uh... Vera, we have need of the money box. And calls inside and. Uh, a few minutes later, uh, a similarly burly uh, woman comes out, her, her biceps nearly as large as the man's. And yes, yes, darling, I've got the money box here. Well, how much do we do we need? Five silver to the goblin. He's brought us some interesting materials here. He points towards the uh, the sarcophagus, and she, her eyes widen a little bit, realizing exactly what it is you're bringing. Uh, uh, yeah, no. Uh, five silver. Uh, sure, certainly. And she unlocks the money box and carefully deposits into your little green hands five silver coins. Ah, thank you so much, madam. <laughs> and you have a lovely day, sir. A pleasure doing business with you and one I hope I can repeat in the future. Offering a large smile and removing my cap. Indeed, whenever you need some decent armour and weapons, he sort of looks over your equipment ra rather contemptuously, you know when to, where to come. Indeed. I How much forward. is a breastplate? Expensive. Uh, breastplates, you say? Chainmail's 24 silver to give you a 
frame of reference. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember now. Uh, but chainmail's hard to make. <laughs> it is. It is. Having seen the process. A large shield is 15. We just brought them a large shield. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that seems to go fairly well. Uh, oh yeah, time not so much hard as time consuming. Quite right there. <laughs> uh, what about the mirror? Are you interested? Just... In the mirror? No, 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 we have another plan for the mirror. Oh, okay. No. I know some people who could definitely do with a mirror, and I'll uh, head over to the elder's house. Oh, very well. As you're doing that um, at the well, Brock, you. Uh, investigate this uh, fairly simple uh, construction in the middle of town. It's got a nice little rope and pulley system mounted on a beautifully, beautifully carved lintel. And the well is surrounded by a low stone bench, worn down by many tired villagers who may have availed themselves of it. And a large bucket stands upon the bench. Does Grok wish to do anything or move on? How far can I lean down the well without falling in? <laughs> Agility check in coming. <laughs> Only one way to find out. <laughs> you can certainly peer down over it without endangering yourself, and you can't quite see the bottom. Do I get a sense of like how deep it is? Mm. Maybe ten meters or so, maybe more. It's hard to tell. Well, I suppose you've got dark vision. In which case, yeah, no, it's about ten meters deep. Is it a larger open space at the bottom, or is it just a narrow hole all the way down? No, it just seems pretty narrow all the way down. I just wanted to back to join the party. Very well. You congregate together as you approach the largest house in the village. The mansion, if you can call it that, the home of the village elder. The, you know, the now rather aged Mrs. Palmer, who from your previous time here, uh, you know that she tends to run a pretty tight ship in this village. There's not much that goes past her beady little eyes. She tries to hold a tight grip. A velvet, a, an iron fist and a velvet glove, if you will, around the affairs of this village. And you've had one or two run-ins with her previously. She's a bit suspicious of outsiders, put it nicely. Give the door a knock. We should sell the coffin to her. No, no, the mirror, my friend, the mirror. Think of it. She'll be needing the coffin sooner. Yes, but. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Generally speaking, people leave the buying of the coffin to the next of kin. <laughs> All right. You knock a few times. I remember, and, remind uh, Greg to be on his best behavior. <laughs> after a few minutes, uh, the door, the front door of this uh, large, well-appointed house, is opened, and you come to face to face with. Uh, the visage of a fairly young woman, maybe in her late teens, early twenties, um, and you recognise this as her as uh, Mrs. Palmer's daughter, Delia, who uh, helps the old widow out. Uh, yes, I don't believe we have any appointments at this time of day. How can I help you? Uh, See, madam. next of kin. 
we have a once in a lifetime opportunity for you today. Something that your dear mother would be very interested uh, in. Doing. We're, we're not interested in, in, in door to door sales, sorry. Ah, you would miss out on such a rare item, though. Something that will be in your family she for many, many starts years. starts to close the door. My phone's in the door. <laughs> <laughs> a goblin has a sale to make. He will be making a sale. <laughs> make me a manipulate check again, please. Certainly. Because they've been going so well. <laughs> Oh, oh dear. No, I'm putting it... The, uh, mama, mama, those strange goblins are back! They're, they're trying to... Trying, they're trying to sell stuff, or they're trying to accost me. Please, get help! And she woman, slams... only give me but a moment... <laughs> she slams the door on your foot <laughs> and shuts it, and you can hear it lock behind her. <laughs> Just Darius is sitting there rubbing his foot like... It's always the rich people that are the most observant. <sighs> Nevertheless, <laughs> there are other places with money where we can sell objects, and they'll curse that they didn't off take my offer. Indeed. <laughs> what do you mean observant? She noticed well, that he was a goblin. Noticed that I was a <laughs> goblin and that I was trying to offload some tat to them. <laughs> but, but, but it will still fetch a, good, fetch a good price perhaps at one of the taverns or at one of the more rich or well-off people we could try the chapel mm, true I might melt it down with some candlesticks though now religious are if we sell it does it matter what happens to it? What were you hoping to accomplish there? Well, I was going to sell them a lovely mirror. One of the kind heirloom. Something that nobody else really has. Who has a mirror these days? Where did we get th Oh, we got that from the cave, didn't we? Yes, it's a corpse mirror. <laughs> Just like we had a corpse coffin. Perhaps we should sell it to the graveyard. Oh, well. Cemetery. Cemetery. Very rich. It could go it's down the true. well. Purifying the water. Oh no, just throw it down there. Imagine the noise. <laughs> <laughs> We've got an eye break. I don't know how long you were going to go. 20 seconds is the regulation time for an eye break. Mm, fair mm. Are there so where, where is your next move, lady and gentlemen? Well, I suggest we attempt to sell it to the humans of the dead man's hand, but they don't like us very much, and dwarves do appreciate good craftsmanship. Yeah, I think our next port of call should be... Three skulls, we can talk to the bar to keep and go, who's likely to buy this tat? And also, he may need a tankard. So I can sell my tankard to him. Or you can sell my tankard, because I don't trust myself to talk to him. <laughs> we shall give it a try. Off to the tavern, then. At the very least, we can drown our sorrows over my um, less than stellar performance so far. Perhaps we should have out of character we should probably should have waited until we took care of our empathy damage because empathy is what your manipulation is yeah surly and pissed off is not the correct state of mind to be attempting to make big sales <laughs> also <laughs> it might have been worth you know doing some sort of effort at valuing stuff first well I'm trying Quite to cultivate possibly. goodwill with the smith fair fair but I have no idea how badly we just got ripped off. And I'm fairly confident we did get ripped off. Mm. Yes, 
Yes, it's a vibe. Deal that fast, it tends to be the one who's receiving the better deal. <laughs> you cross over the bridge and head towards the Three Skulls Tavern, guided by the sounds of the squeaking water wheel as it powers the mill and the brewery that uh, is on site at the tavern. It's, um, I'd say, not too busy at this time of day. There are a few people having having lunch um, as you approach, but the uh, dwarf brewmaster Yawim is uh, providing his wares and his company to, to those who are partaking of his services. As you enter his tavern, he looks up from uh, one of his other patrons and uh, gives you a curt nod. Ah, Darius and friends, wasn't it? I remember you. Thought you'd headed off into the great wide sunset, never to be seen from again. That's the, what the rumours said. You've returned, obviously. We came back with a coffin. A coffin? Oh, I'm sorry, did you lose one of your... No, 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 we found it. No, coffin. we found it. <laughs> it's, it was It was free. We've, we've sold it to the smithy now. He's uh, going to make use of it, I'm sure. All right, very good, very good. Glad to hear that someone around here is making a profit. <laughs> Always a profit to be had. Just need to know where to look, friend. Uh, bloody Mrs. Palmer. She's cra you know, hammering down on us, you know. Any harder and harder to do anything in this town. Anyway, what what can I do for you? Well, perhaps a room or two for uh, myself and my companions here. And uh, a few rounds of ale, I think, would do well as well. Where's your midden pile? Or All right. He looks at the strange druid for a moment. Outside, obviously. All right, well, it'll be one copper each for a flagon and for a flagon of ale, and two copper a night if you want to stay. I can offer you bunk rooms, two to a room, two copper per room. Oh, yes, I have five copper and twelve silver. Oh, sorry. Seven silver. All right. Done. I'll get that ale for you. Turns to grab some of his uh, flagons and provides each one of you with a nice hearty bit of dwarven brewed beer. Feels... Well, it feels pretty good going down your gullets after a long week or more out in the wilderness. Oop, first check. Thank you, Tio. Thank you. Yeah, mm. Still hunched over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everything's still broken. I ain't, no matter <laughs> how many times I check it, that ain't changing. <laughs> I wander outside towards mid and heap and just start scrounging for scraps and rubbish. All right. Make me a survival check, please. Shorty, not bunking with Greg. <laughs> uh, which check, sorry? Uh, survival again, please. Still no drawing your character sheet? There we go. Oh, there we go. Fantastic. <laughs> you spend mm. several minutes quite a while digging around in the dung and the the rubbish of the uh, of the tavern unfortunately though you don't find anything of interest there's no like me there should be How... something tasty here mm -mm. however a few minutes after you start doing that you notice a pair of individuals approaching the tavern at quite uh an aggressive pace, shall we say. One of whom you recognize as Mrs. Palmer's daughter. The other one 
is a tall, scarred, older gentleman dressed in very macabre, foreboding robes of a black with a red trim. Religious robes. Oops. I just yell out, Ho, oh, friends! Do you want the mirror? Look, that's one of the goblins now! Do do something, Starkus. They're, they're horrible. They, they, they tried to accost me. I just take a big swig out of the bottle and smile at them stupidly. <laughs> you there, goblin. We don't like your kind doing unpleasant things to our children. The elder, the bailiff, wishes you to leave. What's a child? Don't play coy with me, goblin. You will I, live to regret it. I'm not playing coy. How, how old is the daughter? Uh, as I said, late teens, early twenties. Not, not too young. And we don't see this, obviously, do we? Um, you probably will have heard the raised voices coming from outside. Can I walk outside to see what's going on? I think, yes, you certainly can. As you do so, uh, Yawim, the, the barkeep, also uh, heads outside hearing, hearing the ruckus. And he recognises the individual. Oh, there, Starkus. What are you up to? These people are my guests. Your guests? Of course it would be you, wouldn't it, Yarim? Inviting all this riffraff from outside. The girl starts. Sturkus, the man, simply stands and you can feel his gaze sort of assessing each of you. Or oh, those of you who, who do happen to come outside. I would have sighed and just walked outside as well. I know what I know. Mean. Yep. Same deal. <laughs> we did on... Oh, hang on. No, I don't know what's going on in my... I am Sturkus of the Brotherhood of Rust. And I'm here at the behest of the bailiff, her family, and this village. Your actions have made you unwelcome here. Unwelcome? Forward. Unwelcome for accosting the bailiff's daughter. We tolerated your presence for a time, but this action will not be tolerated. You have until sundown to leave. Sundown to leave. Tell me, friend, when does the sun set on your house? He doesn't answer. After a few minutes, he says... If we still find you here, and if we still find you, Yoim, harboring these outsiders, there will be hell to pay. And with that, he turns on his heels and strides off. The uh, woman, the young woman, uh, looking somewhat nervous at this confrontation, begins to back away slowly before running after him. Typical. <sighs> well, Tasting I, nice. I'm sorry about that, Yoim chimes in. Unfortunately, that's the, way, that's the way these things, this village is going, unfortunately. They're going, getting more and more antsy about non-humans, outsiders. What exactly did you do to her? No, nothing. I offered to sell them a fine mirror. Of the finest elvish craft as well. My guess is that they're trying to use anything as an excuse to get out of here. I think what we did was uh, exist while green. <laughs> Perhaps if we can exchange the 
promise of room for another round of ale and provisions. Would you like to buy a mirror, sir? <laughs> Quite fine. He looks, and there's a little steely glint in his eye. He grins. Well, anything that old, that old witch Palmer doesn't want is obviously going to be worth a lot. Let's have a look. Well, I'll show him to the pack mule and uh, prop the mirror up. Hmm. <laughs> you weren't lying. This is mighty fine elven work. Very old. Very old. He uh, runs his fingers down the silver work. Well, unlike these backwards peasants, I appreciate good quality materials. Mm. And to think, you'll be the owner of this one-of-a-kind antique that she could have purchased but chose not to. Something that I think will be very well to rub in her face. <laughs> he grins at that. And... He uh, strokes his fine northern beard and goes, mm, I like the sound of that. I could do with some more items to spruce up the place, you know, make it more interesting for the manner of adventurers we have passing through these parts. And think of the tale right. you could spin about it. It was taken from a troll cave, you know. Ancient elven barrow taken over by a deadly troll fought by adventurers. You'll have to tell me the story of how you found it. Indeed, I'll give you... I was about... Hmm, 30 silver for it. Oh, I couldn't possibly take less than 50. <laughs> May I play check, please? I know this is going to go badly. But it might not. But it might not. You never know these days. Yeah, I like you, Darius. I like all of you. You've got uh, you've got a good sense about you, but there's no need to start to stretch the relationship, yes? Tell you what, 32, final offer. Can we perhaps take 30 with some supplies? We are running low. That I could do. We'll call it a deal, then. Kind sir. Thank you so much for your patronage, and I'm sure it will bring you much use in the future. Very well. 30 it is, plus beer on the house. I can certainly give you some supplies. From the sounds of things, you may not be staying the night, unfortunately. Ah, uh, yes. Such as it is in this uh, crazy, crazy world we're in at the moment. Do you know if there's any good rubbish? I was thinking the Elder's House might have some really good scraps. I think we want to stay as far away from the Elder's House as possible. Yes, let's not get kicked out before sunset. Well, we've already been kicked out. Let's just not get kicked out twice in the same day. <laughs> I don't think the next step is a kicking out, more of a kicking of ass. <laughs> Indeed. Have we got anything else that we need to sell? Because we need to... Well, I okay. can... Only other thing I've got is that tankard, which is not going to be a whole hell of a lot. I would like to get some better, you know, armour, etc. And I think that applies to everybody, but I don't think we've got the money for it. And I don't know how badly the smith's going to overcharge us for it. <laughs> Maybe the smith could help us stay. Maybe. I doubt it. Unless we can find something in this town that will bring us back into the good graces. Hmm. The midwife was nice. Indeed. Yes, perhaps we should go see the midwife before we leave. Yep. 
definitely want to top up on water, etc. before we go. Uh, how much food do we get out of the supplies? We're back to 12 out of 12. 12. Uh, he is a very generous dwarf, yeah, so if you can go back up to full. D12 and, and Water and, and food. Huzzah! We ain't gonna starve to death. Not today, at least. Maybe tomorrow. See how it goes. We shall see. <laughs> so, visit the midwife, see about getting that mosquito ointment for horse. <laughs> <laughs> and, um generally get the lay of the land and then get out of town before we kicked out. <laughs> Let's just camp right outside the gates. No, just kidding. They said to get out, they you didn't tell us to have. Yeah, but the dead walk around this place at night, so I don't think we want to be outside the walls and camped, yeah? If we could avoid it. The dead don't like running water. It reminds them of what they've lost. We could take a boat. You think you're vampires? I think he just thinks that zombies can't pay anymore and they're very un, you know, unhappy about the whole scenario. Fair enough. The first stop, midwife. Second stop the fuck out of town <laughs> yeah sounds a plan very, very well funny. you make your way through the uh, winding streets and already you can feel the atmosphere of the town is changing and people are looking askance at you They're shutting their doors as you go past uh, um, ushering their children to apparent safety within their homes. You also note that the handful, the gaggle of ill-equipped but uh, apparently watchful town guards are keeping their distance, but certainly keeping an eye on you. Uh, yes. Different town, but... same old story. <laughs> But you, after a few minutes, you come to uh, the tent slash home of midwife Nervia, whom you met briefly before. This uh, apparently kindly older, older lady. As she uh, tends to her little Emmy lab, such as it is within her home. In, and upon approach, you once again start to smell weird whiffs and sensations coming from the uh, from her tent. But uh, she seems to be humming a tune as you arrive. How do you announce yourselves? I excitedly run up, up to her, just being and smiling. You're like, hello, remember me? I remember you. Oh, oh, Grok, wasn't it? Oh, good to see you. Good to see you all. Ah, how is how is your how are your travels? Tell me, did you find anything interesting out in the great beyond? I found mushrooms. Lots of different mushrooms. And I recommend a visit to the uh, Three Skulls Tavern later and ask the dwarf about it. He has a tale or two that he could tell about the new acquisition he has. Oh, indeed, indeed. And I don't suppose you had anything to do with it, did you? She smiles. Yeah. Well, we played a small part, obviously. Hmm. How can I help you? Well, you see, we've been ravaged by insects, bites, nasty ones. And also, we've been told to get out of the town, but you know, that's, uh, that's part of the course these days. Out of the town? What, yeah. what happened? Oh, well, we found some very interesting things, and I figured, you know who could do with a, uh, a very nice artifact from an ancient civilization would be the Elder. And I went and paid her a visit, and her daughter overreacted horribly to me knocking on the door, simply trying to offer them a, a deal of a lifetime. Uh, yes, that family has always been like that. 
So what happened? Did they send Sturkers after you? Yes, I believe there was a rather unpleasant looking man by the name of Sturkus involved. Yes, she does love to send him as the, the little good guard dog. Yes, one of those people who like to hide behind door frames and jump out and yell boo at you. <laughs> uh, Mrs. Palmer is one not to be crossed. She's old, but she's a cunning one. And that's Rust Brother. He has unpleasantness about him. He dabbles in blood magic, among other things. I try to keep my distance from him between you and me. I try to keep my head down. Oh, absolutely understandable. understandable. Right, be careful, though. If you've angered them, then I would expect more trouble. We plan to leave. Probably for the best, but... Uh, I can certainly tend to those uh, bites of yours, and he, she starts to ruffle around some of her her stock of reagents. Uh, if we could just apply some of this, and uh, she almost immediately starts to sort of rub you down with this strange ointment that begins to feel very warm upon your skin as it works, and. She mutters a little bit something under her breath, whispering, and all of you feel this weird static sensation, and suddenly with a BAM, all of those bites are gone instantly, as if they were never there. All of you recover your, well, those of you at the at her hut may recover your, all your empathy. Yay! No. Huzzah. Huzzah. I'm not pissed off at the world anymore. Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> and Grok, you instantly know that was not mundane. That was magical. It's very clever. I wish I could do that. I have a few secret healing arts. I don't like to advertise too much. This uh, village can be a bit standoffish. <laughs> I know. I just know mushrooms. I just make a small mushroom pop out of my palm and kind of just disintegrate. Is there any way, ma'am, that you know that we could possibly attempt to get back into the good graces of this town? Well, you'd have to get back into the good graces of the bailiff, Mrs. Palmer, to do that. And, well, he's a very hard lady to please. Mm. She oh, has it in for Yawim, the brewer, the dwarf. Doesn't like him, never liked him. Thinks she, he brings trouble to the town. And, well, <laughs> I'm afraid he probably confirmed that to her. I don't know if there's anything that you could do to make her like you again, short of, what, kicking your wee out? <laughs> oh. What about kicking her out? Now that's, mm -hmm. well, I know that we're not the only ones who wouldn't be upset if something would happen to her. Her and Sturkus both, they... Yeah, we all put on a nice facade of getting along in this place, but beneath the surface, people are getting a little bit tired of her rule. Hmm. So what you're saying is that we need to start our own town with blackjack and hookers? I'm not saying anything, she winks. I'm <laughs> simply offering my services as a nice... <laughs> as a... Artisan of the healing arts to those who need it. Yes, your no balm was wonderful. Mm, quite. Tell me, how it's many Rust right. Brothers are in this town? Is it just Sturkus? Just Sturkus. He came to us not too many moons ago. Mm. They tend to travel, settle down, preach their gospel of Rust. They, uh, and she hesitates a moment. They 
seek out those that they believe to be abhorrent to their faith, in particular those who serve the raven. They regard them as heretics and worthy of nothing but death. Right, who do I follow again? There are more like him. I know they start to travel. It is said that they knew how to travel through the blood mist when it was uh, manifested across the land. Only they had the key to travel, and so they are fairly widespread at this point. Do they have a church? Or something? They worship? Oh, but their god, Rust, husband to him, he is the god of progress and civilization and warfare. But they also serve others. I've heard tell that perhaps the great necromancer, the sorcerer Zygopha, still lives. And they may have dealings with him, it is darkly whispered. I don't know for sure. I just know that Sturkus and his ilk, they are not good people. It would be wise to avoid their attentions. Some of the brothers are like... <laughs> you could say that. Some of the brothers are like him. Mages, sorcerers. But there are others who are crusaders. Knights, or so they call themselves. They are relentless in trying to track down what they consider evil in this land. Anyway, you did not hear all this from me. Again, I'm just an old woman trying to mind her own business and get by without too much trouble. <laughs> thank you for your assistance. Yes, thank you very much. That's all right. If we ever do cross paths again, I'm more than happy to assist you as I can. Oh, okay. we will. In this world or the others. Yes, I can say what tomorrow brings. I'll bow in her um, respectfully in her direction and turn to leave. Very well, well, gentlemen and ladies. I suppose our welcome here has worn out. Do you wish to come up with something as a going away gift, or perhaps <laughs> just move on? Let's do. Wash the dust of the off our feet and move on. I'm very tempted to pay a nocturnal visit to somebody on the way out, but uh, we're going to have to be out of here before night falls, and getting back in would be uh, awkward. Yes, have you ever heard of the ancient god Zorg? Mm, <laughs> mm. Very fond of rust, I believe. Yes, he likes hugs. Mm, mm. Perhaps Zorg needs to hug the rust brother. Perhaps later. I don't think this is the last we'll see of this town. Mm. And I don't think this is the last the town will see of us. I think that's about right. But we have food, we have water, we are not carrying the heavy valuable things anymore. Let's get out of here. I would suggest we take the south exit and then head west because we haven't been there yet and all the undead is in the north and we're going to be leaving close on dusk. Mm -hmm. I would agree with this plan. Let us depart this town with a spit on the soil and moving on. Very well. I mean, the Rust Brothers' house is next to the wall. They seem interesting. <laughs> Let's not give them another reason to be xenophobic. Well, if we kill a xenophobe in chief, then maybe things will get better. Who knows? Or it might convince the people that were not already on our side. They were right. That's true. 
Either way, let's get out of here before we have to convince the guards that they're not as dangerous as trolls are. <laughs> Very well. Perhaps discretion is the better part of valor. <laughs> can we go see the old temple before we go? You certainly can, if you wish. In fact, I do have a map for you for it. Yeah, a map! Yes. If I recall correctly, there was an inscription there saying that at the full moon something happens. Yes, we're waiting for that, and yeah, we're it's three not. Weeks away. Yeah. Three weeks away, yeah. We can go back in three weeks. Yes. You know, well, you know, if there was to be some sort of political upheaval here, then you know, three weeks <laughs> is enough time for that to sort itself out. And they said we had to be gone by sundown. It doesn't mean that we can't back can't come back during that time. <laughs> Not sure they see it that way, but hey, we can make the argument. So yes, you make your way hiking up the hill to this ancient looking temple, or perhaps temple may be too strong a word. It's a, a series of standing pillars arranged in a very, very rough circle around a crumbling obelisk in the center of this dell. There are runic inscriptions, symbology carved into these dark pillars, but the inscription that you uh, read previously uh, indeed spoke of strange things happening at, at midnight. Um, in particular, it says, The road to Nepola's last resting place is shown at the midnight hour of the full moon. Yes. Is there any signs of activity or anything else around the pillars? Uh, make me a survival check, please. Are we here at night time? Uh, no, daytime. Oh, I just I can't see anything. Oh, I see. Yeah, you've got some reason your vision is weird everyone else's is fine um, is that because they can see in the dark in the dark possibly hang on we're supposed to be gone by now uh, it's early afternoon present time as for the survival check you do manage to have a look around the base of these pillars and you notice in the the dust and the dirt there are footprints uh, several tracks that just seem to go around in circles around the, the temple um, some look fresh maybe from the last day or two others look like they've been there a while it looks like there's been activity up here. Do they look at all human-sized? Human? Yeah, sorry, I should specify human footsteps. Hmm. It seems we're not the only ones who are interested in this Nepola. Or at the very least, the temple. This isn't a circle. It's a square. All of these squares make a circle. Make me a law check, anyone who cares to. No, I'll give it a shot. I yeah. I have more trained. Oh, I don't, but I will. Oh? Ooh! Oh, oh. D <laughs> you recognise that no, this isn't really a circle, but it's a pattern symbolic of something, but you're not quite sure what. While Osfe, for whatever reason, you recognize some of the symbology around the pillars, and it's this temple is dedicated to the god Worm, the Ouroboros, the serpent that consumes itself. Another popular deity in the uh, Forbidden Lands. 
um, another deity oppressed and persecuted by uh, Rust and that god's servants. Um, does it look like... Do I notice any signs of uh, attempted deconstruction of this... There's been a lot of weathering. This place has been here quite some time, but no obvious signs of desecration. So it's not outwardly worshipping the worm, but... Oh, it is. Like, in terms of the, the inscriptions, it certainly is. Oh, okay. No one's made an effort to hide this. And was Nebula a vampire or something? That will require another lore check. I think we just... Push it, push it, push it. No. Oh. I can't give you so much No, it's not worth pushing. No, you, you can't really recall the name Nebula. Hmm. I think we were like, yeah, he must be a vampire. And we kind of came Possibly, to her. Possibly, yes. I yeah, think he came to her a and... little bit. He must be a vampire, and he must be the reason that the undead are here. Somewhat nefarious, nonetheless. Tied mm. somehow to this shrine and those undead who walk. But I believe we've probably tarried here too long. We should be on the road for new riches and people to meet. People to meet, people to greet. Indeed. All the people to stab. Let's go. Very well. As you pass back down into the town, the villagers are getting even more standoffish and outright hostile. In fact, all the, the bustling feeling that you had previously is all but gone now, as there's this tension now in the air. There's only a few people out and about, and those that are definitely keep their distance away from you, whispering to each other, pointing at you as you leave. As I you... will keep my expression on my face neutral. Not that it bother me. <laughs> as you approach the southern gate, there are a pair of guards looking on at you uh, with a mixture of curiosity and disdain. A good day, yeah. gentlemen. How well equipped are these guards? Uh, basic weapons, so short swords, leather armour. Useful to know. Hmm. Don't come back, outsiders. One of them, very friendly, uh, <laughs> in a very friendly fashion, tells you as you pass them. Oh, heading out you the hate game. money. We hate the trouble you lot bring. What trouble? His compatriot taps him on the shoulder. Boris, leave it. It's not worth it. Let the outsiders pass. The only thing I brought you was money and the chance for a greater living condition. More money means more trade, means more fancy things to have in your town. And yet, you run us off like dogs. I suggest you think on that. <laughs> Hello, friend Bori. Do you like mushrooms? <laughs> <laughs> no. Leave. I'll leave them here at your feet, as you say. Yes, and just lay a few them. mushrooms down. Well, that was wholly unpleasant. It was, rather. Shall Where do we want to go? Head to the northwest or the northeast. Mm. Due north is always cursed. <laughs> I think northeast because the graveyard and everything was on the northwest wall. Mm, true. Wait, was it on the 
away from the graveyard. Whichever the graveyard is, go the opposite direction. The graveyard is northeast. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. I've got my east and west confused again. I was like, hang on, no, that might just be me. But no, I was correct. <laughs> yes, yes. Sorry, that wasn't well, so you good at anything except hitting things. And maybe cooking, eventually. One day. One day. We'll find out. Yeah, so train in order to get better. Yeah, it was a horrible little town anyway. We'll find better towns <laughs> with better loot and better, silly more place. amicable people. That is the hope. All right, so we're marching out at dusk. How far are we going? Ooh, one has to say, I believe. I think is all we can manage until we're out of sight of the town, and then set up camp. You could potentially go two hexes in a single. Uh, single shift. Oh, okay. You can go up to two hexes of open terrain. Oh, that's right. We were in the uh, forest before. Yeah. 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 Very well. We need to rest, and it's coming up on night time. Well, I need to rest. Yes, that'll take us to night time if we walk in a straight line northwest. Northwest? All right. I will have Grok lead the way and Hosve keep an eye out. Yes. I wonder what we'll find next. <laughs> Only good things, I promise. Don't make promises you can't keep. <laughs> um, Hosve, you'll be at neg one to your roll because it's dark. Can I assist with the scouting or is that a one person job? Um. You could potentially assist, yes. Um, that would, I'd say it would negate her uh, the negative for being in, in darkness. So, All right, let's do that then. My roll's garbage, but I can see. So that's survival or scouting. Scouting. Uh, that's right. I'm putting points into scouting, but. Hmm. And a survival from Grok, please. But he popped up behind my character sheet and I couldn't find where the dice rolling thing was. <laughs> where is it? <laughs> All right. Grok leads you northwest as Mount uh, a low rise of hills uh, stretch upwards into this uh, mountain ra range off to your, your south and in the in the distance Grok you notice looming amidst the nearby hills what looks to be a castle but it is some distance away, and you'd have to travel southwards a bit to investigate that. Look, it's a man now, off in the distance. Hmm. So long as in it's not meantime... this fabled Ravenloft I've heard of, <laughs> I don't mind going. <laughs> yes, let's not, not go there. Ravenloft is a, <laughs> it is a silly place. It is a silly place. <laughs> Not inhabited, or if it is inhabited, perhaps they're more welcoming than outsiders. And if it's not inhabited, well, maybe we can have a base. I do enjoy Actually. a base or a house, somewhere to put your feet up. Keep all your valuables. Hmm. Perhaps you may wish to consider the legends of the surrounding area that some of you may have heard. Oh, I wrote now. those down somewhere, didn't I? <laughs> While I work out the internet is being annoying. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, Von Falkenstein, is that better? Zintha mutters too much. Oh. 
He does, and he's getting used to this new microphone. I could always boost myself up a little bit, I think. That might be better. I have to scroll back through all the funny memes my husband sent me <laughs> until I find the... I've never heard of a castle being here. There are witches in the south. Hmm. Never been in a castle before, though. I think that's well worth our investigation, but that's a once we've had a rest. Oh, absolutely. All right, Hosve, uh, with the assistance um, of Dilf, you do spot something in the darkness. Well, perhaps you hear them first. Most likely, s yes. Screeching female voices, but up in the air, coming from above you. And they're screeching. No, I want it. I want it. Give me, give me, give me. They are some distance away from you. Do you try? But they do sound. Like, the voices do sound like they're approaching you, somewhat concerningly. Do you wish to try to hide, or how do you wish to respond? Are they coming from the castle? No. No, okay. Um, no, far I, closer than the castle. I inform my comrades and I ask them, Do I think we've been spotted, gentlemen. Uh, do we wish to attempt to hide or are we going to fight this out? The problem with flying things is they tend to stay out of hitting range and throw things at you. <laughs> I pull my bow off my back. <laughs> and they are, they do tend to be faster than us. True. I don't think running is an option. I think finding a place with a roof or something so they have to come down to the ground would be useful. Anyone see any rocks? There's a big pile of them to the south. Are you talking about the castle? Yeah, the moon man. <laughs> You're probably not going to be able to reach that place before whatever's coming is upon you. Because even now, the screeching is getting louder. Yes, thank you, Greg. That That is very helpful, but a closer one, one so we can reach. They could be friends. You are correct, they could be, but I doubt it. I will eat any mushroom of your choosing if I'm wrong. Dangerous, but okay. <laughs> All mushrooms are good. Some are only good once. <laughs> <laughs> the old 50 oh, yeah. Never change. I'm starting to think that Greg is a child. Yeah. So I'm going to treat him like one. Okay. All uh, right. Heart. Can I do a scouting check to see if we can find any shelter, trees? You probably don't really have the time, as as you've been deliberating, the screeching voices get ever closer, and then to your horror, one calls out, <gasps> Look it, sisters, meaty things, let's eat. And we are now in combat. <laughs> oh, hooray. And it is pitch dark. Oh, that matters for one of us. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Poor is going to be a bit stuck, but... Can I shoot at their cackling? So as long as they don't shut up, we should be right. We will move to combat, and... I'll add you into combat. You also have... Pebbles the horse. God, Pebbles like and what was the um? Kyra what are we? Is your papa? Yeah, Kyra's the papa. What about the other horse? 
and the mule. Well, that's right. I don't think you named it. No, we did. It was something very silly and food related. <laughs> Spare parts or ration. Would you be riding your horse or would you be leading on foot? Uh, I would probably have gotten off as soon as I heard the witches. But I would have been riding it beforehand. A harpy's edible. Uh, to certain people, probably. Not to me, though. Mm, I'd eat it. Ozic, you are the first to respond. As above you, you see this trio of shrieking harpies descending out of the night sky towards the party. What do you do? I see a tree behind us that might be useful as shelter for people who don't want to be dive-bombed. That outside of that, do the predator style. Here I am, kill me. <laughs> Try and draw some fire because, uh, yeah, don't think the others are going to be as good at resisting. They never got that yeah. sling training. <laughs> no. Can I act as a spotter for Hosfe? You can certainly help her, but that would be like take hiding action. behind her. <laughs> what <do you> want? <laughs> By their powers combined, they are only moderately incompetent. <laughs> All right. Okay, if I die, I'm coming back as a goblin. It's ridiculous. <laughs> All goblin party. So, Posik, you have prepared yourself have braced for incipient bad news. Very well. Darius. I'm going to try to use this sling that I have. Mm -hmm. We'll see how it goes. All right. You are at short range. So you're at negative one to hit. Do I just type that in as minus one in the modifier? Uh, yes. Yep. All right. And see how that goes. Dang. Your stone goes swinging off into the into the night. Let that Unless be a warning wish. to you. <laughs> <laughs> the screeching harpies are unperturbed. Grok. I just jump up and down and excitedly point just right at one. <laughs> look at that, look at that, it's flying. <laughs> All right. Hospay. Grok so, helpfully points one out to you. <laughs> thank you, Grok. I shall be sure to pull one of its wings off and give it to you. And I will shoot in the direction he's pointing and towards the closest screeching thing that All right. isn't so, a friend. You can shoot, but it will be at negative two. Yeah, it's, it's better than dark. doing nothing. Uh, where's my shoot button? It's combat. Ah, yes, combat and the longbow. And it is at a negative one modifier. Uh, am I turning on sharpshooter? It's a modifier. Uh, yes, that's a feat of yours or talent of yours, which gives you a, a bonus. Oh, wait, hang on. Am I trained in that yet? Yeah. Oh, oh no, you were looking at doing that. Yeah, yeah so that's, no, just, that's okay. Turn that off. Negative one. Well, it's... Oh, I'm going to push it. All right. Ah, fudge Oh, not. dear. You, you try to aim, but you're tired and you strain yourself trying to see at a target, but your arrow sails off into the darkness not striking home at all. The harpies are completely unperturbed by this barrage of stone and arrow. And actually make a an arrow check for me, please, Hospay. Oh, yes, yes, yes. For yes. your ammunition. That's in gear. There we go. Arrows. Success. All right, yeah. No, you are fine. Oh, yes, I'd like a flare gun. Thank you. <laughs> 
<laughs> Could be handy. Can somebody pull out a torch? Let's see what the harpies do. Now, these are this is not a character. This is a monster for those uh, for those listening. So monsters have well an interesting set of things that they can do. And in this particular instance, what they do is they swoop above you, tackling maniacally as they do, and you are pelted with rocks from above. Oh, okay, that's fine. That thing's huge. Um, all of you are pelted for three damage each. Oh, that's, oh, that's not fine. fine. Do we have a dodge or anything for that? You do not. Oh, where's the damage? And which stat is the damage to? And the strength. Oh, I'm unconscious. Oof. Same here. As Hosfei takes a rock to the head. Uh, three. three damage. Well, that's me out too. Hooray! Actually, actually, I meant to roll it individually for each person. My apologies. So, um, fatalities. Who's then? Also, the opposite will take the three. And let's see. Okay, Darius, you will take nothing. You managed to avoid it. Hey. Next one will be Grok. Ducking behind Hosfei doesn't help you, Grok, as you take four. <laughs> oh, I'm super. As a large rock slams into your into your temple, it's not good. Hosfei, you take two damage oh, from okay. the falling rocks. But that is the Harpy's turn. Back to Posic. Welcome to combat. It's lethal. <laughs> yeah, it is. Are they in stabbing range? They are... not at this point. They're still keeping their distance above you. I was afraid of that. I think my go-to here will be grab Grok and haul him under that tree so he doesn't get hit by the next rocks and turned into puree. Mm. Not a bad idea. Darius. I'll try it with the sling again. I might get him this mm -hmm. time. Still minus one? Uh, yes. Oh, actually, they're in short range now. Ah, but they're probably... Yeah, it would be near. No, they would be near, so yeah. yeah oh, either way. Ooh. There's a loud screech. Just... You sock one to the face, returning the favour, stone for stone. That's one. That's one through that, sisters. We should eat that one first. No, I'm very grisly and bad tasting. You don't want me. <laughs> Eat the horse. <laughs> Ooh, horsey. <laughs> uh, Grok is unconscious. Hosfei. Grok's the healer. Bugger. Uh, can I move and shoot, or can I only do one action? I've forgotten. Um, you need to knock your bow before shooting and if you move you uh, you aren't able to keep the bow knocked so you could stand still and shoot can I uh... ah I don't know if I'm going to die I'm going to die um, 
it's closer to me now. Am I able yeah, to? Yeah, so you'll be at neg one to hit. Still it. Oh, okay. Delightful. Come on. Show me the thing. Thank you. Oh, you do have sharp sharpshooter. It came as a starting talent for you. Oh, did it? Should I roll it again? I believe so. What does it give me? Uh, plus one to hit with your bow, basically. Oh. Plus one modifier. So, yeah, just have it picked off. So? I mean, you land a hit anyway with that with that particular roll. So... Um, there's another out uh, screech. Just, uh, your arrow digs into one of their wings. <laughs> one, one shot says it too. <laughs> They're fighty ones. We're not mm. worth it. Go away. <laughs> yes, can't <they? laughs> The harpies make their next move. What are they going to do next? They are... Oh, no. <laughs> All right. We, we should eat that one. No, that one. That one. As the three of them, the three harpies, split up. Uh, one going for Hosve, one going for Darius, and one going for Posik. Aha, uh -huh, they split the party. They'll be doomed. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but they have the high ground. Are they coming to land, or are they? Yes, shooting? so they're swooping down to scratch and claw at you now. So they're going to be within uh, melee does that, range. Does it mean that Cairo and the horse can attack as well? You could potentially set them uh, on, maybe. Pebbles is useless, but <laughs> poor right. Pebbles. He tries. Well, she tries. I don't remember. Hey, and it's gorgeous. <laughs> Useless, useless, but gorgeous. At the very least, it can be a meat shield. I can't remember what we called it. If only we had a coffin to hide in. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth money. Oh. <laughs> Use the mirror to reflect the rocks back at them. <laughs> This is when we find out it was a magic mirror. All right, Posic. They managed to strike you for one point of damage for your strength. One swoops down to, to claw at you and bite at you. Uh, Darius, you also take a point of damage to your strength. Dang it. And Hosve. You also take a point of damage. And I'm unconscious. As Given that melee attacks, don't we get um, parry or dodge against that? You can potentially do that, yes. I can't because I'm wheeling a bow. I think you can still dodge. Yeah. You need a weapon yeah. that's got parry, but you can dodge anything regardless of what you've got. Okay, what do I need to roll for that? Um, agility. Uh, Any negative be, modifiers? Hang on, let me have a look at this. Uh, it's roll move. Oh yes, Redodge. sorry. Yeah. Oh right. So you can do it as a reaction, but it reduces the amount of actions you can take in your next round if you do so. Oh, is that including shooting? Uh, it would affect you shooting, but I mean, you, if you fail to dodge, you're going to be on the ground anyway, so yeah. there's no real downside. Ah. <laughs> Unfortunately, Hosfe fails to dodge and gets clawed in the face by the lovely, lovely harpies. I'll try a dodge. Make me a move, skill check, please. Hey. All right, you are successful, and you manage to duck out of the way, so you avoid the the one damage. Nice. Uh, 
and Pozik. I'm assuming this doesn't count as a punch or kick for the purpose of parrying. Uh, for them, it actually would because they're just using their claws and and feet. So because it's a plus two to parry yeah, unarmed yeah. unarmored things, and I want all the bonuses I can get. <laughs> Oh no. Oh, that's not good. So yes, you take the clawing as well, unfortunately, Pozik. Yeah, I could try pushing it, but if I push it, I will fall over and die. And it is your turn, sir. Well, I just tried to eat me. I'm going to try to ruin their day. Go for the eyes. <laughs> Go for the eyes, boo! Ross! They do have giant breasts just hanging right in front. Those things are sensitive. Go for them. That was one point of strength damage before you. Correct. Yes. Let's make sure I factor that into the roll. Oh. You take a swing clacking into one of them who lets out a gurgling gurgling scream of pain and horror not expecting such a brutal counter-attack this one has pointy pointy thing he kind of faces go away the, the other two scream in horror fleeing from Hosve and Darius as, as the news of the pointy thing uh, utterly terrifies the now wounded harpies, in particular the one that uh, Pozik just nearly decapitated with his broadsword and the three of them flap wounded up into the sky and flee flee into the night before any of you can uh, even blink to respond. Good. That could have gone better, but it could have gone a whole lot worse. <laughs> well, I think we're going to go to the castle. <laughs> I think now might be a good time to take a ten minute break. Sounds good. <laughs> yeah. But yes, fortunately for the party, harpies are cowardly creatures, and as soon as they start to take serious resistance, their morale tends to fall. So, I wasn't pulling punches there. <laughs> Good. But yes, that is what combat looks like. Pretty cool. I'm going to get a drink, and I'm still trying to remember what that horse's name was. Somebody named it something to do with steak, and I can't remember what it was. I cannot remember. It was like three weeks ago. <laughs> Very so long. Yeah. Right, while they take a ten minute break, I'll leave you all with some fantasy themed music.
All right, we're back, back. Boy. And we're back from outer space. We just learnt that we could have have had shit upon our face. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was a very brutal encounter. I'm very fortunate that uh, you survived that. But uh... <laughs> we're alive. You are alive. But we aren't going anywhere in a hurry. <laughs> no. So I'm upright, Darius is upright, and both Grack and Hosfe are down, yeah? But not dead. Mm -hmm. I'm not dead! Hmm. Well, I think it's just I set up the tents here and we let them sleep it off. Yeah. <laughs> just put, literally put the tent over them. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Ooh, and actually, we also need to roll for critical hits for uh, Hosfe and um, for Grok as well. Eh? Because you've got dropped to zero. Oh, does that if do... You um... Drop to zero, you get a critical hit. I don't like it. So something's going to happen to you. So for Hosfe... Can I have a kitten? see what Hosfe gets. I want a kitten. Oh, oh dear. Osprey a... is in a bad, bad way. Um, it's a concussion. She's been nearly disemboweled. Your entrails are supposed to remain your entrails, not your extrails. Mm. <laughs> the inside part's on the outside. That's not meant to happen. The inside, yeah, no, she's got significant, significant bleeding from her gut. Um... Mm. She is not in a good way. Can I he... try to stem the wound, or at least? Uh, I would up? strongly, strongly recommend that. Yes. Uh, and Hosfe, any time you're required to take, make a might move or melee check, you will take one point of damage until this is healed. I ain't going anywhere. What can I roll? All right. Uh, have you got healing, sir? Uh, I have not. some healing. Oh, good. Probably a better choice, then. I have nothing in it. There's just a whisper between us. Mm. <laughs> I'll take something over nothing. There's a whisper between a poke and a stab. One success! Let me see what is required for you to heal this. To treat it. Rex answers mushrooms. Hmm. Yes, we need to roll for what, what, what uh, poor Grok is dealing with as well. Um, in fact, I could probably let uh, Grok roll it if he, if he likes. Yeah, that's your fault. Yeah. So if you roll me 2d6 and let me know what would each number is. Oh, we may have lost him. Oh no. Oh dear. Probably child involved problems. Oh, he's unconscious, so he's role playing very well. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Just roll it for oh, him. Yeah, I'll roll. Oh, was that someone? Is that a return? He was back, wasn't he? I don't Oh know. no. Oh no. Did you just kill him? Oh no, yes. What have you done? Uh no, he's gone. He was He was decapitated. Oh dear. With a rock? Oh, his head smashed in, I suppose. Uh mostly smashed it. Took his head, yeah. Boo. Oh, hey. you're back, Ultima. Hey, Ultima, you're I'm dead. <laughs> my, yes, my apologies, Ultima, but you are the first casualty of the campaign. As the harpies managed to decapitate you because you dropped to zero strength. <laughs> it was a big rock. <laughs> it was. Oh, no. <laughs> 
and we're still working out whether Hospay will survive as well. Um, Sorry. If I come back, I'm coming back as a goblin. So I can see! <laughs> we are not very popular as goblins, though. <laughs> this is true. I'm, I'm not very popular just from hanging out with you. Hmm. Could be the token human that we send into town to uh, negotiate. <laughs> Mm, not be tainted by goblin slime. Okay. So Hosve, fortunately, thanks to um, Darius's intervention, he will live. Huzzah! All right. Thank you. However, Darius. you are still going to suffer from that one point of damage each time you make a, a might to move or other similar skill check. And that may take some time to heal. I like to My imagine time. that um, our good friend Grok has just turned into a mushroom under the tree and we're like, oh, where'd he go? <laughs> That kind of more like a slime ball that dissolves into the ground. Mm. <laughs> Oof, I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> That's okay. Right. Brutal, brutal, brutal. All right. I'm assuming everybody is resting. <laughs> I ain't doing anything else. Yes, I think we should set up the camp and I should take first watch. Very well. Yep. I will set up the camp, you do the watching, and then we can sleep. There might be a field kitchen just laying around now. <laughs> but nobody knows how to use it. Well, if I ever get the chance, I'm going to learn. All right. Um, I will have a scouting check then from uh, Darius. Yeah, I would so like to do a sleep sure. check, please. One sleeping um, check, please. <laughs> you can rest and you can heal back your all of your damage. All of it. You still suffer from the critical hit. It's like the, as I said, you you take one damage for every might move. Like yeah, this. but for how long? Um, you find out. Oh. Like in real life, it could be a while. Uh, Darius does not go so well with his scouting role. Uh, Posic, are you resting too? I am setting up the camp so You're everybody camp doesn't camp. get right. penalties for things. Very good. Mitch, that was just survival role, yeah? Uh, yes. Feel free to make a roll. Yeah, the bonuses haven't come through onto the sheet this session for some reason. Just double checking mm. them. Odd. Right, I get plus three for flint and steel and tent. So I'll put that in. Very good. You are very That's successful. Tough. That's setting up camp uh, for your compatriots. It is a good camp. Saying the sentry sucks. <laughs> and one of the things I wanted to level up was being good at setting up camp. So I think that's a separate role to see if the practice actually paid off. Mm. Fortunately for you... These few hours of darkness are uneventful. Oh, thank God. <laughs> we live to see another day then. That's very fortunate. Indeed. Um, however, I believe that Darius and Posic are fatigued. Yes. Yep. 
Ons camp so set up. Sleepy. One of us sleeps, the other one watches, and then hand over, I guess. Sounds good. Um, and I'll apply the critical injury to Hosway to to have character sheet. All right, um, Hosway, your stunning watch. Uh, Once you've cleaned, it, you're healed now, so you should be able to. Yeah, yeah, I can do that, um, but I'm not going to be doing much while I'm watching. As long as you can yell loudly, I think we're fine. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, you're fine. So it's might, move, and melee that you that will hurt you. Oh, good! I can use my eyeballs. Um, scouting was it? Yes, please. I always, I always hope it's survival, but it's never survival. <laughs> Ah, I mm. fudge knuckles. All right. Well, it's daytime at least as dawn arrives as the two goblins are resting. Let us see what, if anything, that comes your way. It's the 13th of Spring Rise. Ominous number. Could be a lucky number. Could be. We'll see. Do you encounter? Uh, fortunately, the weather's a bit better. 28 degrees. Fortunately, once again, you are left to your own devices out here on the windswept plains. Oh, thank goodness for that. And the two nice. goblins are able to rest up, heal up their injuries. And we need to do the um, food and water, etc. Indeed. Yes. God dang it. My water's good, but I ate some food. Makes sense. All right. Should we attempt to bury Grack? I don't think he's here anymore. But his crap is. <laughs> he just turned into ooze. Oh, yeah. His head turned into a slime mold and kind of dissolved into the ground. Well, that made that easy. <laughs> Well, it was a very nice cloak. Crap. A cloak that's actually a tapestry. Like, that's worth like fifty silver. Let me check for that. I feel like it's not worth anywhere near that anymore. <laughs> Is this a mushroom? It smells weird. Stained. Hmm. But there's also, I think I had some vegetables and a water skin on me. Yeah, sorry, we'll take your supplies, but... And a very big stick. I'll take a stick. I like sticks. And I've grabbed the kitchen. Would anyone care to say a few words for our dear departed friend? Indeed. From mushroom he came to mushroom he goes. F and China. Yeah. <laughs> Greg, you are a fun guy. <laughs> da -da 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 -da. <laughs> he he died as he lived. Brainlessly. <laughs> On the ground. <laughs> In the dirt. That was incredibly unlucky to take to get that roll. <laughs> I was... came back and I saw the roll and I was like, hmm, oh. I've got a feeling of what this is about. <laughs> I don't think this went well. No, and it's a special talent to be able to re-roll that because things are terrible and even then it's just swap the order of the numbers. Mm. Which wouldn't have helped in that. No, no. Yeah. Double sixes. Mm. Oh. 
Any, anything else, I think he had the possibility of surviving, but yeah. <laughs> mm. He was not meant for this world. So, come the dawn, you spend a few moments, a few minutes, paying your respects to your brave companion of this past past few days, and weeks and months, in fact. You've come a long way, poor Grok, to be with you. But now, perhaps, he will be in a better place, one with the natural world that he loved so much. What well, does the party wish to do next? I suppose we go towards the big stone thing. Big stone thing? Well, given Hoss is still messed up, can I do more medically stuff there, or is this just a time thing? Uh, actually, yes, you can do a bit more. Um, but that require her to rest up and spend another few hours. Should we find better shelter? Well, we've got a pretty decent camp set up based on that role that I did, so we're in no great rush to be anywhere. And anywhere we go, we're going to be triggering more encounters. Not that we're not going to be triggering them by staying here. And given you're going to hurt yourself if you go anywhere until you're fixed, I think we need to fix you before we go anywhere. Logic is sound. I think you can still fire your bow, because that's not any of those particular skills. It's strength-based. Riding a horse, but man, that's strength-based. Move in melee, so any, but basically any raw strength skill, any uh, difficult movement, and melee combat are the things you need to avoid. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's a move roll to do over map stuff. But no. Yeah, no. let's not tempt fate. I think on that one, because <laughs> it would one hundred percent be the random encounter of you fall down a cliff, roll move to not die in rockfall. Mm. But you have lost your guide as well. True. Um, so shall we stay put, do healing, and uh, forage the area while we wait? Yeah, sounds good. Alright, so I roll healing and Hoss roll scout to keep an eye out and I suppose I'll Zin goes and does something else interesting. Darius is going to forage? Yep, I'll try foraging. Very well. Alright. And that is survival, isn't it? Yes. Very good. All right. Is me scouting working on my scouting? Uh, you've already had some successful scouting rolls, so it would be you would need to spend a shift not doing anything else and make a wits check, and you'll be able to improve your scouting. Um, as for Darius's efforts, I will need to. That will be at a neg one because you're in a play. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Nate 2, because it's spring and you're in the plains. There's not a lot of shrubbery out here. So I might ask you to re-roll that survival, please, Darius, with a Nate 2 modifier. Certainly. Might be worth hunting instead of foraging, but you've got no I've real sling. range to anything. Would hunting be better? Uh, theoretically, yes. There's probably more game out here than um, berries and bushes and things. I'll give hunting a try then. Is that the same role with a different modifier or no? Um, yeah, that would be survival. A uh, different modifier though. Uh, you'll get plus one to your roll. <laughs> Take that. To yeah. find prey. Oh. Oh, two successes, alright. Let's see what you find. 
So to begin with, you need to actually find things to hunt, and then you have to actually hunt and kill it, um, depending on what you may find. Find prey. What do you find? Do, 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 do. All right. Oh yeah, you actually get one for each success. So you got two successes, so you have two options to hunt. Oh. Option number one, you find a a couple of ravens um, hanging around. Perhaps they've noticed the corpse of Grok, but. <laughs> um, you notice you notice them hanging out in some trees nearby. They're an option, or you spot a very small herd of deer. Ooh, what are my chances on the deer? Because I've only got a swing. Would I know that I would have no chance? Uh, you, your sling could potentially work work okay. Um, to kill prey, it'll be another successful survival check from you, basically. But you need a, a weapon which you'll have. Yeah, I'll I'll give it a try with the sling. Then we'll see what we come up with against the deer. Very well. You... Uh, no modifiers for this. Ah. Ooh, ooh. Trying to push it. I'll try it. We'll see. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> you barely miss. You, you you creep up on these deer and try to ambush one with your sling. You barely manage to uh to miss it, which infuriates you and you chase after this herd of deer as best you can, trying to run down something. <laughs> something to to bring back but it just utterly frustrates you Ugh. and by the end of it you're, you're nearly quite literal wit's end damn running uh, meat <laughs> <laughs> alright meanwhile Pospe keeps watch Posic rests up um, Posic that heal was that for Hospe? yep she's the one who needs to rest for that so oh, she would, she, she would, would need to rest. Okay, so she couldn't have been scouting while I was healing then. Correct. Right. I'll let you change your change what you're doing if you wish. So you could potentially go hunting or foraging yourself. Yeah, why not? Let's give it a crack. Uh, hunting. Yep. All right. So separate roles. You go after separate separate things so first up survival check with the plus one oh you find something what do you find more deer you find more ravens yeah uh, that is your single option again another survival check uh, do you have a weapon yes you have your uh, have your blade. So you basically have to try and sneak up on these crows and surprise one with a survival check. Yeah, so survival roll. Mm -hmm. And no modifiers on this one? No modifiers on this one. Oh, you get it. You bring home one whole meat <laughs> yay meat <laughs> one dead crow yeah, if only we had someone oh. who could cook that with the vegetables we got <laughs> that will be my ne next trick <laughs> teach myself <laughs> how to cook I have all of the stuff and I have ingredients this can't go badly at all <laughs> just stuffs them all into Meanwhile. a pothole Meanwhile, Hosfe is left by herself, standing watch over the campsite. Once again, you are left in peace. Whew. As the two goblins come back with their 
with their gains. One a headache, one a bird. <laughs> it was deer. To I tried to eat you. them, they ran away. I'm upset. I'm going to sit down and sulk. <laughs> so he will nod sagely. Uh, well, next port of call is, I think, the healingness. So, can uh, Darius watch while we do the thing? Sure. Uh, absolutely, can. I can do that. Let's see if I know how to doctor good. <laughs> Scouting to keep watch, isn't it? It is indeed. You didn't Until fail. It comes to midday. Oh, he, oh, he pushes it for a success. I do it, but it pisses me off. <laughs> it's gross. It's, it's hard. A bit. Yes. <laughs> Changing the the bandaging. Yeah. How hard can it be? They're meant to stay inside. <laughs> yes, but they want to get Fortunately, out. Fortunately, though. With your healing, you believe that Hosfei should get better in maybe two to three days. Alright. So, we're going to be here for a while then, assuming that we're sticking with plan of not overly stressing things. Does seem a good idea. You can practice. Yeah. I can practice looking at things when I'm sitting still. I didn't roll that with any modifiers. <laughs> Please stop. The murdering begins. It is midday, and perhaps Darius is very careful to watch the skies. He would be, because and... there was harpies. And yes, and it's very good that you do, because in the distance you see something large and winged, flapping its way towards you high in the sky. It's bigger than a normal bird, Darius, and once again you have the options to, to stand, to flee, to try and to try and hide. Dragon, run! RLF mode enabled. Not a dragon. I would assume it's a dragon. <laughs> it's too big not to be. Run. <laughs> well, we I'll have three. Can. You grab horse, Fay. Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Onto the horse with you. We've got a mule uh, and two horses now. We've got enough for the whole party, so. Oh, very true. Yep. Yep. Everyone is now mounted. Let's go. All right. You flee. Where do you flee to? South. We're going to go hide Southwards. in the castle. Very well. It's not coming from the castle, is it? No. No. This is. <laughs> if anything, the, the 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 flying critters of doom seem to be coming from the north. But um, yes, you manage to flee as fast as possible on horseback to the south, and you approach this looming castle. Um. Is this Beauty and the Beast? No. You. <laughs> no, it certainly is not. As you flee from this screeching, bewinged creature, which um, fortunately seems slower than, uh, than your horses, running pell-mell uh, as you are, up into the, the, the mountain pass towards this castle. And shortly thereafter, you uh, lose sight and sound of, the, of that winged creature as a fog begins to roll in. Was it a crimson you. fog? Was it just no, fog? no, 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 not, not the crimson type, just regular fog. <laughs> Thank goodness for small but, mercies. The fog disperses for a moment, 
allowing you to see a crumbling stronghold ahead of you, rising up against the northern side of this particular mountain pass. It is surrounded by a moat filled with muddy water. The landscape is almost barren, with very little in the way of grass and thorny bushes surviving here. It's now quiet after your pell-mell dash up here. Apart from singing and strange animal sounds, which seem to echo around the, the pass, the likes of which you've never heard before. More concerningly, there are bones from horses and what you think to be humans strewn along the road up to the castle. You also notice a fire burning through the uh, windows of a watchtower set out in front of the between you and the castle proper beckoning you with its warmth and light and I will give you an image to look at of this castle and I think we will call it there for the evening that's what I was waiting for <laughs> sounds good uh, let me find a pretty picture welcome Ladies and gentlemen, to Weatherstone. No. Oh. Looks good. Friendly place. Sorry. Doesn't look like it's <laughs> cursed at all. Dipped. <laughs> Defo not cursed. <laughs> Make a note of that. <laughs> So the tower to the right with the light in the window, is that the fire mm -hmm. you mentioned? Or? Yes, yeah. indeed. Yep. Mm. And as you can see, there it is separate to the castle proper. You, you'd reach it before okay. heading over the moat towards the castle. Uh, shall we go find out who or what is in residence in the standalone bit? Next time on the Next Forbidden time. Lands. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining us. Thank you once again to the party for being good sports and nearly dying at the hands of screeching, flapping um, harpies. Nearly women, women from the sky. Yes. <laughs> nearly. <laughs> yes. Condolences oh, nearly. to poor Ultima and <laughs> the loss of our, our dear Grok. And I look forward to. Uh, Seeing what he might come up with for his next character, if indeed he wishes to continue, he may he may rage quit. <laughs> uh, Stupid game. <laughs> um, so it's like I want exactly the same character, just comes out of mushroom in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Grok the second. <laughs> I am Grok too. Fear me. Mushrooms are on Yes. <laughs> but yeah, no. Thank you all. That was. That was good fun from my my perspective, and I hope all those listening in enjoyed it too. Thank Indeed. you for coming. Uh, thank, thank you all. Thank you for your company, and we'll see you next time. Indeed. Later, folks. See y'all later. <laughs>